Anyone going on an Alaska cruise is bound to have questions about the experience, but sometimes there are some truly questionable and downright funny questions about going on an Alaska cruise. And today we have a lighthearted look at some of the, well, silliest questions to ask about an Alaskan cruise. Here we go. Hey everyone, it's Matt from RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com, and you know, I like to have fun sometimes when we talk about planning for a cruise, and you know, today's title is about the weirdest slash stupidest Alaska cruise questions that are out there, and this isn't about making fun of people or, you know, making anybody feel bad about asking these kind of questions. There's just inevitably certain things that people really do want to know, like there's a genuine curiosity, but when you think about it for a second, you realize, oh, that was a really silly question to ask. And today I wanted to highlight some of these because over the years, I've seen a lot of people ask a lot of questions about going on a real green cruise. And at some point, everybody's a newbie to everything, including going on a cruise, right? And while we all have typical first timer questions, there are some questions that make you really scratch your head a little bit. And of course, an Alaska cruise is very different from a Caribbean sailing in many aspects in terms of planning and the actual sailing itself. So it's understandable that experience and new cruisers alike are going to have some concerns. But in looking at, again, some of these common questions people have asked about going on Alaska cruise, there are definitely a list of some that I came up with that are just out there more so than like, did you really think about this before you asked? I'm not sure. So far be it for me to skip over a cruise question. I wanted to share answers to these concerns just in case you were wondering the same thing. Let's start with number one. Is it cold on an Alaska cruise? How cold does it get on Alaska cruise depends on the time of year, but yes, it will be cooler than pretty much any Caribbean sailing in the summertime. That isn't to say you'll be shivering below freezing temperatures and it's, you know, going to be wearing parkas all the time. It is still summer after all. The reason Royal Caribbean and all cruise lines sail to Alaska in the summer is because there are more temperate conditions. However, yes, it can get cold in Alaska during the summer. Temperatures in Alaska will depend on the month you sail and how far north or south your cruise goes. Keep in mind, though, that your ship will be hugging the southeast panhandle of Alaska, not visiting the Arctic Circle. On average, you can expect mild temperatures in the summertime, with average highs in the 60s and lows in the 40s and 50s. With all that being said, rain is a factor that can make a mild day feel much colder than it really is. Rain is really common in Alaska, but usually short-lived. It's typical to see a day start out rainy, the sun come out, and things heat up a little bit, and then an hour later, another passing shower before the sun returns. The bottom line is you should expect rain and pack accordingly so you don't get soaked and then feel colder. Number two, do you see icebergs on an Alaska cruise? Every Royal Caribbean cruise to Alaska will attempt to visit at least one glacier. So what's the difference between a glacier and an iceberg? A glacier is a giant sheet of ice that can extend for miles and cover vast areas of the land and sea. Icebergs are smaller pieces of glacier that have broken off. So yes, you will very likely see icebergs in the water as your ship maneuvers in and out of the glacier area. Typically, these icebergs are small, although sometimes they can be a spot for seals to hang out, maybe take a break. The most common glaciers Royal Caribbean visits are Endicott Arm Fjord and Dawes Glacier. Tracy Arm extends over 30 miles alongside the wilderness of the Tongass National Forest. And as you sail through this deep and narrow passage, you'll see mountain peaks and waterfalls burrowed into evergreen clad cliffs. Dawes Glacier is known as the granite cliffs that surround the glacier, mountain valleys, and drifting icebergs. Not to mention the harbor seals, brown bears, bald eagles, moose, and wolves you may see around it. So you will see icebergs, but it's not a Titanic situation at all. Do they take U.S. dollars in Alaska? Yes, they do. Alaska is part of the United States. It is a state, just like all the other states in the lower 48. And yes, they do accept U.S. dollars there. So you don't have to worry too much about that. Is it true that it never gets dark during an Alaska cruise? It will get dark at night, but only for a few hours at most. Alaska cruises are too far south to truly experience why Alaska is known as the land of the midnight sun. But during the summertime, there can be up to 20 hours of sunlight there. How much daylight versus night you experience will depend on the time of year you sail, as well as how far north your ship happens to be. Will your cell phone work in Alaska? And if you're an American, then the answer is almost certainly yes. As a state in the United States, Alaska has included American cell phone plans, and you can expect service while you're in and around the ports you're visiting. Unlike the lower 48 states, once you stray from the city, coverage can drop rapidly due to the terrain and vast unpopulated areas. Can you see Russia from Alaska? <laughs> the short answer is no. The question is rooted in the now famous quote from former Alaska Governor Sarah Palin, but unless you're 
on Little Diomede Island, you cannot see Russia from anywhere in Alaska. However, you can see a lot of inspirations from Russia because, of course, Russia used to own Alaska. And ever since the United States bought it in 1867 for $7.2 million, there are still some callbacks and relics of Alaska, particularly if you visit the port of Sitka. There's a lot of Russian history rooted in the design and architecture and, of course, history of that particular port. Probably my favorite odd question about Alaska is when do deer become moose? And this is not a butterfly situation. Deer are deer and moose are moose. You can find either in Alaska, but they're not. <laughs> they don't evolve into one or the other. They're two completely separate species. In fact, moose are huge animals compared to deer. So if you do see moose, there's a good chance of that, by the way, depending on your time of year as well, uh, they're going to be a very different animal than any deer you might see. Next up is, do you need a passport to go on an Alaska cruise? And just like the Caribbean, if your cruise sails round trip for an American port like Seattle, and you're an American citizen, you don't need a passport, but still a really good idea to have one. Instead, U.S. citizens on cruises that begin and end in the same port in the U.S. can use an original government-issued picture ID, like a driver's license, and an original government-issued birth certificate or original naturalization certificate. Keep in mind, by the way, you're going to need a passport if you chose a shore excursion that visits Canada. If your cruise sails out of Vancouver, then you're definitely going to need a passport in order to go on that particular sailing. My recommendation is for everybody, regardless of where you're from and where you're sailing to and out of, to get a passport anyway. It's just a better investment in your cruising future. And the last stupid question about Alaska that I heard was somebody, while sitting on a dock or on a cruise ship, ask what the elevation is here where they are. Yes, at sea level, they were asking what the elevation is. Now, of course, if you go to Mount Denali, which is 20,000 feet up in the air, yeah, that's a different story. But when you're on the cruise ship or you're in port, your elevation is still pretty close to sea level because you're at sea level because your cruise ship is at sea level because you're there in the ocean. So hope that makes sense. These are some fun questions, not to make light of anybody's questions at all. I think we're all here to have a good time and understand that sometimes we all ask silly questions. I have done this many times, maybe not these particular questions, but I have asked my fair share of dumb questions. But let me know in the comments below what dumb Alaska cruise questions have you heard asked and or maybe you asked yourself. It's okay. We're all safe here among our friends. Let me know in the comments below. While you're down there, hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, and turn on your notifications. That way, YouTube lets you know we have a brand new video to share. This has been Matt from RealCarbonBlog.com, and we'll talk again real soon.